bro. He got so much better over the years. I wonder if they cage her up before and after fights to let her cool down. She's an animal, bro. Like, for real. And the cast kill has got so much better since losing to Katie Taylor all those years back. How long was that ago? Let me mute it real quick. About how long ago was that fight? Hold on. Oh, my bad. I'm making fish soup. Um, hoping, hold on, hoping that it'll be ready uh, by time or before Haney versus Diaz starts. Now 11 and 2 with four KOs. Jessica McCaskill, undisputed 147 pound champion. After defeating Cecilia Bracus in two fights, the second fight, she beat the shit out of her. Hey, no disrespect, but you know, women want to be paid fairly. Women will talk to you like you're a man when it comes to my beautiful sport of boxing. But yo, she was whooping her ass, bro. I thought the fight was going to get stopped in the first round. She is a very heavy handed fighter. Like, like that sister that hit real hard, you know, like that, that bully sister that people have, you know, that she punch you, you like, ah, nah. but I'm wondering in a rematch with Katie Taylor, oh, by the way, how long was it ago with that fight? Yeah, that shit was a long time ago, four years ago. Crazy. So I'm wondering if Katie Taylor moves up to 147. Now, first, Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano has got to happen. Amanda Serrano is taking on Miriam Gutierrez on undercard of uh, Paul, um, Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Hold on, let's listen into the particulars. Hopefully. Number seven, your winner by TKO. She's still the undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Jessica Castillo McCaskill. Well, Sergio, it was tougher than she probably thought it would be. What do you think Rick Ramos says to her in the gym next week? No, first of all, it was the chin of Candy Wyatt. Now, let's give this girl some credit. She took, like, some big shots. I don't think that was a hard night work. Um, oh, God, cycle crazy eyes. Um, I, don't think, I don't think that that was a um, hard night's work for Jessica McCaskill. She dominated every round. Like, you know, here's the thing. She's not fast. She's not really defensively sound, but... Bro, like, you don't want to get hit with that. Sh Look at that shit, bro. Like, and you can tell it just looks so hard, like, and heavy. You know, like, yo. You know, so the question is, after Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, God willing, it happens in, in 2022. Will the winner move up to 147 and go after Jessica McCaskill? Now, people have been talking shit like Jessica McCaskill and uh, Clarissa Shields should fight. For one, Clarissa Shields said it herself that getting down to 154 is a feat, but getting to 147 pounds, it can be potentially dangerous for her. You know, unless they meet at a catch weight, put it this way, I just still feel that Jessica McCaskill was too far, too small. Remember, Katie Taylor right now is at 135 pounds, you know, reigning supreme. She tested the waters at 140 but she's at 140, um, 135 pounds. But in a rematch, how would a rematch between them two go? Now, Amanda Serrano, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, Amanda Serrano was a boxer with, with uh, punching power. McCaskill is a pressure-fighting power puncher, not a fighter to go out there and try to jab and box. She's coming out there to try to put a boot in your ass. By the way, pause it if you have to. Look at the punch stats. Like, look at that, bro. She whooped her ass. So for them to say, you know, like, I don't know what the zone commentators are talking about. You know, we're not always going to agree. That's the way it's supposed to be. But, yo, she came to put in work, and she got her out of there. You know? And she's improved. It's going to be interesting to see what us and Celia Brock is doing because she's still floating around out there. Clarissa Shields is going to be um, fighting Savannah Marshall. So, oh, let's listen in. Good punches too. It wasn't like a just charge you kind of a thing. She was throwing punches just like I said packed. she would, throwing punches with every step forward that she took. 
You swarmed her early, around, early on. It looked like you were headed towards an early stoppage. How surprised were you that she was able to take that type of punishment? Man, she can definitely take some shots. She's not like an easy blow through at all. But um, you know, after a certain point, you kind of get concerned because you know what this sport does. But you know, I think it was the right call. She was taking a lot of headshots. Got a little bleeding going on. So um, it is what it is. This was a late replacement for you. You learned about her less than a week ago. How much, if any, impact did that have on the way you fought? Oh, none, none at all. Because even even though I didn't know at the time of the replacement, she had been getting ready for a fight anyway. And you, you think somebody's coming in and they're not ready, you can't assume that at all. And that's, that's not what we did. We just made sure that I was in shape and I was ready to go. Walk me through some of the action we saw in this fight because you were just throwing combination after combination that were landing, but every so often she would throw a couple of combinations back. Yeah, I wanted to work on my defense and not really rush a lot of things. If the opportunity was there, I took as many shots as I could. And I felt like the head was so available that I didn't throw a lot of bodies. So I heard Rick yelling, go the body. So I was trying to mix that in there as well. But, you know, if she was right in front of me and I didn't want to throw, I tried to move my head and slip some of those punches. When you get to the seventh round, prior to that, you probably heard the referee say, you got to show me something to Candy. What was your mindset coming out there for the seventh? I, I threw a couple combinations in maybe like the fifth round. And I was like, OK, that's not it. A couple more combinations in the sixth round. I heard him say it again. OK, that's not it. So I just, you just have to keep going until they stop it. This is your third fight now at 147 pounds. How much more comfortable do you feel at this weight right now? I'm comfortable at any weight. I mean, we've talked about, you know, how I started off at 135. We talked about possibly going up to 154. It's all in the training. It's all in the nutrients and the strength conditioning. Rick Ramos, he handles all that for me. You don't have to go back to work on Monday morning. <laughs> how, much, how much has that made a difference in your training, your preparation for these fights? I do have to go back to the gym because even though I was working full time, in investment banking. I was also a full-time fighter and, and worked in the gym. So I do have to go back to the gym. I have to let everybody know there's no days off. Um, everybody should be there training as well. But it is different. It's very different not having to go back to a corporate lifestyle. Is th this was your first fight in a multi-fight deal with Matchroom. As you look ahead to 2022, is it your plan to wait and see what happens between Chantel Cameron and Callie Reese at 140? Or do you want to get another fight in before potentially taking on the winner of that fight? Fighters hate waiting. We hate waiting. So uh, I, I definitely hope that Victoria Bustos, that gets cleared up. She was the original opponent for this fight. And she just had some issues with her vaccine, but hopefully gets that cleared up, stays in the gym, and we can see her early next year. You saw Kaylee Reese in the corner of Candy Wyatt there. You think you sent any kind of message to her if she can get through Chantel Cameron? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know she was in the corner, actually. I, I don't have my glasses on. I, I knew Candy was there, and she was my opponent, and that was the important thing. And she put on a hell of a fight. Congratulations, Jessica. Thank you so much. Todd? Back to you, Adnan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jessica, calm down. You have yeah, it's a, uh, um, yeah, yeah. So options between our calorie Chantel Cameroon, um, who are fighting for Undisputed at 140. She also, there you go, she said it, you know, thinking about testing the waters at 154 pounds. Clarissa Shields, by the way, is going to be busy. And also, she is signed with the boxer in um, Sky Sports. So her super fight is against um, uh, Savannah Marshall. One of the biggest fights, you know, if not currently right now, outside of Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, the biggest fight in women's, you know, boxing as far as fans are concerned. But there are a lot of options there. A lot of options. And I'm impressed because she's getting better each fight. And the body work. We're not seeing women boxers do what she's doing to the body. So if she goes to 154, you know, see what Hannah Gabriels is doing. But Hannah Gabriels is up at 175, I think, right now. I forgot what she's doing. But don't get me started in blurting out names, you know, because then, you know, I do cover a lot of women's boxing. But it'd be hard to keep up because the women jump up and down and wait so much. Then belts be vacant here and there. You know, Devin Haney's in the building. But anyway, let me get back to my fish soup. Thank you for watching. Please take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe to T Street Controversy with Fight View 360.